We're actually now in the premises of uh, Metropolia University of Applied Sciences. Uh, the city is Espo and we're in Finland. And, and this is our workshop for the Sohio project, which is now ending. And we have been implementing autonomous or automatic robot buses in Finland in open streets in, in mixed traffic. The hardware we were using are two EZ10 robot buses. They are set up on a, a fixed route somewhere in the city, then they go and, and autonomously or automatically follow that route. They have obstacle detection lasers so they can they don't hit anything. What they don't do is they don't understand any traffic rules or they can't overtake anything or you know, that sort of stuff. So, And also they, what they don't have at the moment is they don't have remote operation controls so we have to have an operator on board. They move at 12 kilometers an hour at the moment. That's not the technical top speed but that's the top speed that is regarded as the safe top speed. So 12 kilometers an hour is quite low so we are disturbing the open traffic and the, and, the, and the mixed traffic. Finding routes where the disturbance is, is tolerable is quite hard. So far the pedestrian lanes and routes that use pedestrian lanes have been the most promising. Basically we have three sites. Um, one of them was this beachfront road in Helsinki which uh, proved to be quite hard to operate because of the other traffic, the mixed traffic. We didn't have any problems with the localization or that sort of stuff, but the buses need, for the localization, the buses need uh, built-up environments. Uh, they use featured-based localization for the most part, and that means that we have to have big varying size buildings alongside the route, because the robot buses themselves, they make the, the localization map as they go. The infrastructure of the route uh, has to be adapted for the for the buses. So that means that we, when we go to a, a site where we want the bus to run, we have to adapt the site so that the bus, for example, it does have uh, the right of way all the time, or we have to have uh, traffic lights so that we can control them, so that we get the, the green light every time we pass it, because the bus doesn't know when to stop if it sees the red light. The Finnish traffic legislation somehow forgot to mention in the 70s that the bus has to have a driver and a steering wheel. Uh, so when it came that we had autonomous buses in the world, it was possible for us to have this open road autonomous testing. The, the general reaction is curiosity and, and like amusement and the, the urge to test something new. We have conducted one peer-reviewed study of, of the people's reactions to a, a traffic system that doesn't have operator and people they also say that they are afraid to come in. But what we have learned also is that people are very adaptive so quite quickly they forget that they are in, in a, a automatically moving vehicle. What we have achieved is a massive amount of user data and also know-how and knowledge of the technical side and the infrastructural side of, of this thing. So what we can actually now do and what we are doing is we are disseminating our knowledge to other cities, other organizations, other projects. We have two big projects, one of the Sohia Baltic which is uh, the next project after Sohia which will be basically Sohia project uh, in Baltic states around the Baltic Sea. So we will be having buses in different cities, maybe open traffic, maybe closed areas. We have the weather which is quite challenging and we have this saying that if it works in Finland it works everywhere. I think other countries in the European Union would be able to learn what we have been doing. I will say that in, within probably five years we will have more advancement and, and, and more like uh, not pilot projects anymore. For the five years, I think we will be seeing this throughout Europe, Asia, United States.